And we're back. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities Podcast. My name is Jay coming to you live. We have an amazing show for you today. We're going to talk about this thing called Carfax that everybody puts way, way too much. Uh, uh, they, they think it's written in blood, right? Everybody thinks that if it's on the Carfax and it says positive, as it says negative, it's written in blood and Everybody wants a Carfax. Nobody knows how to read a Carfax. And today, we're going to teach you how to read a Carfax and keep you from making a multiple thousands and thousands of dollars mistake. Are you ready to do this? Let's go. Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride while buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay, and this is the podcast to tell you what to watch out for, whether you are buying, selling, or repairing your car. With over 26 years of automotive experience, we are the Auto Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAutoAgent.com. We're real estate agents for cars. Boom, booyah. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities Podcast. This is Jay coming to you live. Hey, Carfax, right? Everybody's like, oh, I got to have a Carfax. I got to have a Carfax, else I can't buy this car. And if it says a bad Carfax, it's a I mean it's a horrible car. If it says a good Carfax, it's a great car. Well, the answers to those will be answered today because those things are not necessarily true. But before we get going, I want to thank our sponsor, iAutoAgent.com. At iAutoAgent, iAutoAgent is real estate agents for people's cars. They will take care of finding you the perfect car nationwide. They will ensure the reliability. They will keep you from making a $40,000 mistake. And you don't even have to go to the dealership until you approve the deal. How about that? It's getting tough to buy cars. iAutoAgent.com will help you. Just go to iAutoAgent.com and click buy or look for our vehicle finder. And it will tell you all about how that works. And if you're looking to sell a car, we will help you sell your car. We will market. We will list. We will show your vehicle at no cost to you. Handle the heavy lifting so you don't have to take pennies on the dollar when you go to the dealership and you don't have to sell it on your own when you're a private owner. And if you're just joining us, we always go live at Tuesdays at 12 p.m. on the Facebook group page. It's called the Auto Authorities Podcast. And if you just want to watch us and you can't watch us live, go to the YouTube page, The Auto Authorities, and you can watch my pretty face every single time you log in. And you can click the notification button in the right corner, and it will notify you for all of our podcasts that we have. And if you just want to listen to my beautiful voice on the way to work, you can simply go to The autoauthorities.com. That's the autoauthorities.com. And you can listen to us on 19 different channels worldwide. You can listen to iTunes, Pandora, Google, you name it, we're on it. And what I'd love to hear is your, uh, your, your feedback and comments as we get going here, because we're going to talk a lot about some some things that you may think you know about, but I bet you you're going to learn a lot. We're going to have some fun because it all comes down to this thing called Carfax and AutoCheck. And most people like don't even know that there is another history report other than Carfax. They've done such a good marketing job. So let's just talk about just to, to get going here is the, the AutoCheck and Carfax. On Carfax is this beautiful little, you know, readout of everything that's happened since the vehicle's been new, but so is AutoCheck. And what's interesting is they get their information from different sources. So there's multiple times that we'll be looking at a Carfax of the same exact vehicle, year, make, and model, and an AutoCheck, and they say two different things. That, my friends, is scary because how do you know which one is right? One of them says it's an accident. The other one says no accidents. One of them says it has one owner. The other one says it has three owners. 
The reason being is where they get their information from. So that's something that I want to share with you first. Carfax typically gets his information from if there's an insurance claim, a police report. So like if you're in an accident and there's a there's a, um, a claim uh, on your insurance or a police report, chances are it's probably going to pop up on Carfax. Now let's talk about body shops. Body shops have a reporting feature that if you are having body work done in your car, there's a good chance that your car is going to say it's had an accident. They're getting a little bit better on clarifying what the extent of the accident was. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a little bit. But auto check is getting their information from different sources than Carfax. And that's where sometimes things will pop up as multiple owners versus something that says it's only had one owner. So the DMV is also giving information, our private information, to the consumer. Uh, they're by using uh, the Carfax or by uh, by putting it on Carfax or AutoCheck. And what I notice more often than not, when a Carfax says like it's had two owners, you can see like maybe if one of them was a personal, I'm sorry, a, um, a lease and then it became a personal vehicle, they're counting that as two owners when in reality, it's really only one owner. So you have a choice at the end of a lease to buy the vehicle, or if you don't wanna buy the vehicle, then you don't buy the vehicle, but it's still showing multiple owners. So the, the key is also is when you're looking at owners on a vehicle, so many people are like, oh, I want one owner. And if it's more than one owner, I don't want it. Yeah, um, it's cool to be a one owner. And I mean, that's going to be the best route. But what if, and we're going to talk about this, that whatever the type of vehicle, let's say it's not a personal vehicle and it's a one owner. Let's say it's a rental car. I'm going to leave a little teaser here for you because I'm going to tell you why you should never buy a rental car. If if you can possibly help it. It wouldn't be my first choice. But it's important to look at how long that they've owned the vehicle. So like, let's say, I'm gonna use Corvettes as an example because this is a vehicle that people put very, very low miles on. You might see five different owners and the length of time is increasing. So it doesn't mean it's a bad vehicle if it's had five owners. It's all about what is actually on the vehicle. So most people were keeping their cars like three, three and a half years on an average. Well, that number is going way up right now. And why is that? Is because prices are still high on used vehicles. And it's not even so much that anymore is that the interest rates have jumped so much now. It wasn't even that long ago. It was less than a year ago that you can get a 60 month loan for 2.49% and now a 60 month loan might cost you 7 8 9% depending on what your credit is and depending on the year of the vehicle so what are people doing they're shying away from these really expensive vehicles so they're keeping their vehicles they're fixing their vehicles and that is why that these, um, that these mechanics are so busy because people are keeping their vehicles running as long as they possibly can. So the amount of owners really isn't a big factor for me. Is it cool to see one owner? Yeah, but the next things that I'm gonna share with you are really, really important. And I'd be curious, as you're going through and you're looking at vehicles, what do you look for? If you see a one owner on Carfax and no accidents, do you just think, oh man, that's gonna be a good car for me? Most people do. So let's talk about accidents. 
these, these reports, Carfax and AutoCheck, are getting better of showing what the accident is. But I can tell you multiple, multiple times that it is very deceiving when it says it's had an accident. And so at iAuto Agent, when we're interviewing our clients, my team is, and they're asking them about the different things like mechanicals, everything good there, blah, blah, blah. Well, if we see an accident, we ask them about that. And we ask them like, hey, what, what happened here? Like, I have seen literally on Carfax before. When you're looking at Carfax, it'll say damage in multiple places. And the way that Carfax does is they show a diagram of Carfax. And it's highlighted in all the different areas. The truth is, is that Carfax is very deceptive. I'll know, I'll tell you a situation. There were some branches that fell on a car in a storm that we were looking at. And it said it had multiple pieces, multiple damages. And when we talk to the client, they're like, oh my gosh, well, there were some branches that fell on and it was, it was scratched. And we just, you know, we repainted those, those areas. Does that mean it's a bad vehicle? No, it doesn't mean it's a bad vehicle. But people could shy away from it because of that. And so many times Carfax and AutoCheck are just like the opposite. Like one says accident, one says not, not an accident. So let's talk about the types of accidents. Minor accident, I'm not too worried about that. Damage report, not, not, not tremendously worried about it. We were talking with another client uh, the other day and it said a uh, damage report. And it was on a new uh, Raptor. And he's like, oh, it hit a parked car. Oh my gosh. Like, and that's has like on Carfax, it's, it's, it's a big yellow triangle with an exclamation point right there. It is very easy to see and it scares people. And sometimes people don't even look at the vehicle because of that. So you gotta be really careful too, where you get your vehicle uh, fixed because if it's not really that big of a deal and you go to one of these big body shops, they're probably reporting that to Carfax. Mechanics actually report to Carfax too. So whenever you have stuff done to your vehicle, like maintenance, that's also reported to Carfax if they have a relationship or a partnership. And Carfax is trying to partner with as many mechanics as they possibly can. A major accident is very, very scary. Um, that would be something where it says moderate to major. That's that's what Carfax defines it as. I would definitely look very much into that. And it really depends also on the type of car that you have. Do you just have a Toyota Corolla or do you have a Maserati? Because if your Maserati is showing any type of damage that has been done to that car, you're going to be in trouble as far as the value goes. It's not going to make as big of a deal on a car, um, on a Corolla or a Honda Accord or a Toyota Camry. It's not going to make that big of a deal. But if you have a BMW or Mercedes or these high-end cars, you really, really want to make sure that uh, you know what's on that report before you either sell the car, or you take it to the dealer. You don't want to be blindsided. Uh, I have a special gift for anybody that is listening to this right now. If you would like a complimentary Carfax on your vehicle, simply send us a message at theautoauthorities.com theautoauthorities.com with your VIN and let us know that you would like a free Carfax. They have just went up to $44.99. We will get that for you at no cost and we and give us obviously an email where we can send, send that to. So yeah, so it really, really makes a difference on the type of car and whatnot. 
So for those of you that are just joining us, we're talking about Carfax. We're talking about auto check. We're, we're helping you avoid buying a lemon. We're helping you avoid a $40,000, $50,000 mistake because you bought the wrong car. And we're talking about like Carfax and what they report and auto check, what they report, uh, how to really look at these things and, and build a story from it. Because in our vehicle finder program, that's what we're doing is we're building a story based on that history report. And our trained agents have extensive car experience. So we're looking at these in a completely different way than you may be looking at it. And I'm giving you tips right now on how to look at Carfax. If you have any questions about Carfax, any questions about AutoCheck, leave your comments below. I will personally answer them for you, or you can go to the autoauthorities.com, send us a message. I will personally answer them for you because I want to protect you. And all this information that I'm giving you today is raw and uncut. This is unedited. This is this is not the BS that you read on the internet or sometimes watch on TV newscasts. This is real stuff. Now, I'm going to get into the really, really stuff now that you want to avoid. The first thing that you want to avoid is what they call a lemon law buyback. I have talked about this multiple times on the podcast, but I'm going to talk about it again now because a lemon law buyback basically says that the vehicle has been into the shop X amount of times in a certain amount. And the reason why I'm not saying exact, because depending on where you live in this country or world, all the lemon laws are not the same across the board. So if you've brought your vehicle in for multiple times for the same repair in a certain time period, you may qualify for the lemon law buyback. Now, it has to be a new car. There is no such thing as a lemon law buyback on a used car. It has to be a new car. And let me tell you this, the chances of you having something that will be covered under the lemon law is about the chances of winning the lottery. Why am I telling you this? And I am telling you this because I can tell you multiple times in our vehicle finder program, listening to my agents, they're talking with people. We will find that vehicle for you. But sometimes our clients want to find that vehicle themselves. Fine. They think that they found this really, really good deal. And they're sending us stuff and they're like, oh, look at this BMW. It's a great price. Yeah, but it was a lemon law buyback. And I'm going to tell you a story because lemon law buybacks are one of the things that you want to avoid like the plague. So when you're looking at the vehicle, if it says it like the one I'm going to tell you right now, where we had a client that wanted a Range Rover, he wanted a 2014. It had really low miles, like 30 or 40,000 miles on it. And he was debating if he wanted to use our vehicle finder programs. Like, I don't know if I want to pay you guys to go find a vehicle and vet the vehicle because I could just do that myself. Do you think you can? Listen to this story. This guy goes out. He finds a Range Rover, the big Range Rover. It says it's at an authorized Land Rover dealership. And it says that the vehicle is certified. Uh, up to certified standards. That's the exact verbiage. It had beautiful pictures. It had a beautiful description. And he sends it over to us. And within seconds, we see it's a lemon law buyback. So we, we wrote him back and said, congratulations, we just saved you $40,000. And he's like, I don't get it. You just saved me $40,000. How? We're going to keep you from avoiding making a major mistake. That's truly why our vehicle finder program is here. We help people at iAutoAgent.com keep from making a $40,000 mistake. 
So this guy, he winds up finally signing up with the vehicle finder program, but then he found another vehicle. This one was in Florida, another Range Rover. This one had a salvage title. Now I want to talk about salvage titles. I want to talk about what they actually mean. A salvage title means that that vehicle has been in an accident or incurred so much damage to the vehicle that it exceeded a certain percentage of the value of the vehicle. And the reason why I say a certain percentage, depending on where you live, salvage title, it can't, um, it, it, it's not going to be a total out if, unless it reaches a certain percentage mark, if that makes sense. So like in Missouri, it's 80% is what it needs to reach as far as the damage to the vet vehicle value um, before they total it out. So when something's issued a salvage title, we at iAuto Agent do not sell those. I highly recommend against it because salvage title means that that thing was in such a bad accident and people are buying these. So salvage titles are worth about half the value of actually a vehicle because people were putting them back together and they're selling them. And I see them all the time on Facebook marketplace all the time. And it will say it has a salvage title and it will say it on the title. And there are companies out there in state in certain States, they are actually title washing. So sometimes things have salvage titles and they don't even show it has a salvage title. So that is really, really important. Let's talk about frame damage. Frame damage happens when, again, you're in an accident, the metal part of the frame is bent, it is considered having frame damage. That's another thing we won't sell because it, it, it affects the integrity of the vehicle. Frame damage is something you want to run from as fast as you can. And when it comes to floods, Definitely, no, you don't want that vehicle because these, when you see a flood, so for example, Florida's had a lot of them. Where do you think those vehicles go after the flood? You think they just throw them away? No, they clear the water out. They figure out what's going on with the vehicle and they sell it at a car auction. And some of those vehicles are, are they have, they have like a notice on the, I don't know if it's a notice or it's on the title. Basically, it's just like stamped on there saying flood damage vehicle. Now, the reason why I say some of them are is because there's so many of them that pass through the system that are not stamped flood damage vehicle. So if you see that, on the accident report, holy cow, you better run from that. Or not the accident report, the Carfax. Run from it. Let's talk about a mileage rollback because this is something that I want to leave you with because we're going to have a part two to this. And we're going to talk about the types of cars. We're going to talk about where the car comes from and the history. I want to talk about mileage rollbacks because we had a situation. I remember I'm also an automotive advisor on TV here in St. Louis. And we had a client that bought a vehicle. They literally rolled back the mileage on the vehicle. And if they would have just done a simple Carfax, they would have figured out that it was a mileage rollback and to not buy that car. Guess what? He got screwed. Uh, the guy, you know, skipped town and it was really, really a bad situation. And he wound up buying a vehicle that had a hundred thousand miles more on it than what he thought. And there are literally, there, there are devices that you can buy on. Amazon are under $20 to roll back the miles on a vehicle because it hooks into the OBD2 on the bottom 
of your dashboard, it's very, very scary. But what I want to leave you with is the mileage rollback to not worry about. And that is called the clerical error. That is when you look at the Carfax and it says there's a mileage rollback. And I'll tell you how that works. So let's say hypothetically, you're looking at a mileage of 40,000 miles. And then the next, say, let's say 40,500 miles. The next one down says 4,600 miles is what the mileage is for the next one down. It's very obvious that somebody did not click a zero. And that happens at mechanics all the time because they're doing things very quickly. And it happens at our own DMV. They put the mileage in wrong. That is not something to worry about. Carfax even has some disputing ways, and I can share those with you if you want to send another message. Just put it in there on in the comments. But Carfax has a dispute. AutoCheck has a dispute. And the only thing I'm going to say to you is this. If you have like a Corvette or a higher end car and it says a mileage rollback, I don't care if it is a clerical error. It will hurt the value of your vehicle if you don't get it taken care of. And you should know what is on the Carfax. It's kind of like your credit report. You should know exactly what's on there because the last thing you want to do is get blindsided. And for those of the, you who are listening to this right now, leave your comments below. I would love to hear positive stories. I'd like to hear horror stories. I'd like to hear how much does this, does this uh, information, do you find a value? I would love to hear about that because in the next episode, what we're going to talk about is the types of cars. You have to be very, very careful when you're getting into that because that's the next thing that we have to talk about because if you get the wrong type of car, you could be very costing yourself a lot. So leave your comments below. Go to theautoauthorities.com. Get your free Carfax from us. And I really appreciate everybody joining us. Stay tuned for part two, and we will see you next time. Peace.